A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking and jumping and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with amazement and astonishment at what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give thanks to the Lord, invoke His name. Make known among the nations His deeds. Sing to Him, sing His praise. Proclaim all His wondrous deeds. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory in His holy name. Rejoice, O hearts that seek the Lord. Look to the Lord in His strength. Seek to serve Him constantly. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You descendants of Abraham, His servants, sons of Jacob, His chosen ones. He, the Lord, is our God. Throughout the earth His judgments prevail. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. He remembers forever His covenant, which He made binding for a thousand generations, which He entered into with Abraham and by His oath to Isaac. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. That very day, the first day of the week, Two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, said to him in reply, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days? And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, 
how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. Besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are! How slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke! Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, Stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them, who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Happy Easter. We continue to celebrate this week as one Easter day. And it becomes clear to us here as we continue to make our way through the Acts of the Apostles, which will be where the first reading is taken from all throughout this Easter season, that the resurrection of Christ is a victory that is shared with us all. That this resurrection is not simply the event of Jesus coming out of his own grave by his own power, but that it unleashes a power that continues to work through the disciples of Christ. This is so important to understand. Look at what is occurring here. A crippled man is approached by Peter and John. We don't have the risen Jesus here appearing to them. Jesus has, by this point in the Acts of the Apostles, has already ascended into heaven. But he has poured out his Spirit. Remember, as we already reflected in these recent days, the pouring out of the Spirit is the fruit of the resurrection. And by that Spirit, Jesus is with us, and He is walking among us still and and, and doing His work through us, just as He is also with us through the Eucharist, brought to our attention, of course, in today's uh, Gospel passage. But it is not Jesus walking around in the flesh as he did through his ministry and even after his resurrection, it's Peter and John. And they're going before this cripple and they are saying, in the name of this Jesus, get up and walk. And it happens. The power of the resurrection, therefore, is healing and raising up God's people through his appointed apostles who bring that gift in His name. I don't have silver or gold. The church is not meant to be simply a a social service agency, although, although the church does more social service work than any institution. 
But it's gospel work. It's evangelization. It's proclaiming the name. Yes, they give this man something, something very real, something he would value more than silver and gold. They give him his, his ability to walk. But it's not just about doing good for people. It's in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. But you see now the pattern that is beginning. It's these, these appointed men who actually have become ministers of the power of Christ's resurrection. So that saves us from the idea that the, that the power of the resurrection is just isolated to Jesus or just to that one day or even just to those 40 days before he ascended into heaven. It's an ongoing power. But it's not just a random power. It's being exercised through an actual ministry of people who are not God. Not, not, uh, they are not perfect. They are sinners themselves. In fact, to anticipate tomorrow's reading a little bit, Peter and John will say to the people when they see after, this, they, after they see this miracle, they, were, they will say, you know, don't think that this is from some power or holiness of our own. Yes, Peter was the one who spoke to this man, took him by the hand and lifted him up. Yes, it was through the instrumentality of Peter. But he said, don't think it's because I'm something special. It's because Jesus is. So we can affirm the centrality of Jesus, the uniqueness of Jesus, and at the same time affirm that that power of Jesus is operating through people. After all, if indeed, as our Lord himself told those disciples on the road to Emmaus, all that is written about him in Moses and the, and the uh, prophets and the Psalms, all the scriptures. If all of those centuries of preparation, God preparing his people, culminate in Christ, could that have been just for it to be fulfilled on one day or in 40 days? Could it have been that it was just supposed to be limited to that? No, the preparation, the centuries and centuries of the law and the prophets and all this preparation for the Messiah was a preparation for the whole world to receive the Messiah. And so we have the long time of preparation and then we have the long time of proclamation once it is fulfilled. All those scriptures, he opened their minds to understand that on Easter we had reached the fulfillment of the law and the prophets. And he gave them that scripture lesson on the road. When it says he began with Moses, it means he began at the beginning of the Bible. Because the first five books of the Bible are considered the books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These are the, 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 the five books. The Torah, uh, uh, books of Moses. He began at the beginning. And in fact, the first words of the Bible, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, that's a, that itself is referring to Jesus. Maybe that's where he started with these disciples on the road. When the scripture says, in the beginning, God created, he's talking about Christ. Paul to the Colossians unfolds this for us. He says, Christ is the beginning. Firstborn of all creation, all things were created through him, all things were created for him. He is before all else that is. In him everything continues in being. It is he who is head of the body of the church. In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In Christ. And by his resurrection he has become the beginning of the new humanity. And then no doubt Jesus went on with them to talk about Abraham and the sacrifice of Isaac. Isaac carrying the wood and asking where is the lamb and that is a symbol of Christ. And then Isaac being, being spared from death by the hand of the angel after Abraham picked up the, the knife in obedience to God and saying don't harm the boy. It was as if Isaac was given back to him as from the dead. All of this was talking about Christ and no doubt Jesus talked to them about the Paschal Lamb, whose blood was to be sprinkled on the doorposts of the believers and not one bone of which was to be broken. He is the Lamb of God, whose blood consecrates the homes of all believers. No doubt, he talked to them about 
Moses lifting up the serpent in the desert so that all who looked at the bronze serpent were healed from the bite of the real serpents. No doubt, as he had said in his earthly ministry, this was a prophecy about him being lifted up on the cross. Perhaps Jesus said to them about Mara, the place where the Israelites came on their desert journey where the water was bitter and the people complained to Moses, we can't even drink out here in the desert. And God said to Moses, take a certain piece of wood and put it in the water. And then the water became fresh and the people were able to drink it. A piece of wood? What kind of wood do you think that was the prophecy of? The cross of Christ which makes all the waters clean. No doubt the exodus itself. The parting of that Red Sea. Foreshadowing of Christ. Drowning our enemies. Not Pharaoh and his army, but sin and death. Drowning them in the waters, not of the Red Sea, but of baptism. All of this was speaking of Christ. Psalm 22, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then the triumphant note of victory at the end of that psalm. Or the suffering servant of Isaiah, by his wounds we are healed. Jesus spoke to them about all that referred to him in the scriptures. The prophet Ezekiel, the temple, that's Christ. The water flowing from the side of the temple, that's the blood and water flowing from the side of Christ. Or the prophecy of Isaiah that said, On this mountain the Lord of hosts will provide a rich food of choice foods and juicy wines and, and, and the Lord will destroy death forever. Again, a prophecy of what was accomplished in the Easter Triduum in Christ. And on and on we can go. It all was pointing to Him and their hearts burned within them as they heard all these things. It all came together. It all made sense. And they said, of course, this is the one who was crucified. He's with us. He's alive because that was exactly the prophecy and the plan. May our hearts burn within us as we consider all the scriptures and all the power of the resurrection that makes the lame leap and jump, that makes the spiritually blind able to see who our Savior and our God is. Jesus, thank you for this Easter gift. Deepen our faith and make our hearts always burn with the truth of your word and with the love of you, our Savior. Amen.